I fitted the fans to the heat sinks and I've also been experimenting with different voltages and different little boards to control them. It's not the most attractive part of the project but bearing in mind this is the rear and when the colour's on most of this will be out of sight. Now the biggest problem is of course this is a very powerful amplifier and does generate quite a lot of heat. These heat sinks are the ones that come with the L15 amplifier and they're totally inadequate and I've mentioned also that the fins should really be vertical and not horizontal. It's better if the fins are vertical because the heat will naturally rise from them and also they're just they're just too small so fan cooling has to be the answer these fans actually come with a cover with a filter on it but i've taken them off so that i can see the fans rotating because they're so quiet these fans that sometimes you just don't know if they're on or not at first glance you may think that i've just purchased the wrong size fans for these heat sinks now clearly that is the size of the heatsink, well that's the bottom of the heatsink and the fan goes much lower than that. Now what you can't see terribly well is there are holes under the um, heatsink which goes inside the amplifier itself and the idea is that when the fan comes on it will also blow air through those holes into the actual cabinet which will help cool the electronics inside. So there's no visual repercussions to this, apart from if you look at it from this angle, which I don't think many people will be. I also tried it with one fan right in the centre, which obviously blows air along the fins and out the... Well, come, the air comes out everywhere, and you can put your hand around it and you can feel the air coming out. And I could have probably got away with one fan, but as I bought two, I thought, to hell, blow the expense. I'll show you in a minute how I propose to control the fan speed. Temporarily, I have got this little probe with a thermistor on the end. And I haven't mounted it yet because I haven't necessarily decided that this is what I'm going to do. It's just poked in between there and it touches both the top and the bottom and it just is a is a push fit not perfect but there again it's not necessarily going to be like this I'll probably end up mounting the heat the um, thermistor in the center rather than just one end there's not much difference but at the moment I haven't quite decided on which of these little modules I'm going to use permanently. This angle shows you more easily how it's looking now. This is the little module that controls the fan speeds. This is not necessarily how it's going to look so forgive the rather untidy wiring because I've learnt my lesson of cable tying things in and then changing my mind two days later and then you have to strip all the cable ties out and re-lengthen or shorten otherwise so for the moment it is what it is but it works. Originally the idea was and probably still is that the fans will be off under if you like normal background listening when it's just ticking over at five or six watts as it would do for just just background music and it seemed pointless to have the fans blaring away cooling things down when they're not even warm so that's why I've decided on one of these little modules that is temperature sensitive now this particular module that I'm using at present is quite simple the little switches here control the fan speed when it clicks in and it's very very simple you just, it's it's either slow medium or fast but there's four positions actually from quite slow to 
to virtually full. It never gets the full 12 volts because obviously there's a switching transistor or some sort in there, so you do lose um, the junction voltage drop. There is a fixed temperature when it switches on and it's about 40 degrees centigrade. Just with the thermistor tucked into the heatsink, as I showed you on the previous shot, it works really well. Another LED, a red one in this case, and it's just in parallel with the fans via, I think for memory, a 22K resistor, because I didn't want this LED bright enough that it was gonna light the whole room up. It's just something that will go on and off and it's just a nice to have a visual indication that the fans are on. I still haven't received the rather nice large um, indicator uh, for switching between the um, inputs. So I've just put this one on because it was beginning to make my fingers sore trying to turn the shaft without a knob on it. So. Don't judge it by what you see. It's going to look much prettier than that. And I've also fixed the switch, so the light and the amplifier is off until I turn the thing on. Then the light and the amplifier comes on. This is a new fan speed controller that I've ordered. It's the one that I favour on paper, shall we say. It uses 12 volts DC which does mean I've got to put a little power supply or module to power it. Maybe I can take 12 volts from somewhere else, I don't know yet. But the one I'm using on the board I've just shown you actually runs on AC and I've taken it from the 12 volt supply off, off the winding that I put on that um, mains transformer. But not a major problem. But this particular module turns on at 30 degrees centigrade and it, it's just at its slowest speed at that point. And it gradually ramps up to full speed when it goes linearly, I think linearly, it does still say so, I hope so, up to 50 degrees C, where at 50 degrees C the fans are running at full power. So that, it's an analogue device as well, which um, we like analogue. Anyway, so that hasn't arrived yet, and if it's any good, I'll let you know. This is another little module that I've purchased, and it's either faulty or I can't make it work. This is an all digital one, that's probably why I'm having trouble. And it's got many, many functions dozens of them and you have to keep pressing one solitary button and when you first turn it on it's supposed to have two LEDs in the center uh, and whenever I turn it on there's never two LEDs so I can't actually program it now I don't know whether it's finger trouble um, or I just I'm just not clever enough to make it work I've spent about an hour on it already uh, multiple cups of coffee and I still can't make it work. It's partly because the instructions are, shall we say, well, well it comes from China so I don't need to explain any more do I? But I'm not clever enough to make it work. You could see the little, well you can just about see the little preamp board in there which we've talked about on many many occasions. Now, I have to slightly sidetrack on my comments on this board. You'll recall that I've complained in the past that they fit a capacitor across the feedback resistance, which takes the frequency response down to unacceptable levels. And I've now got two or three of these boards in use where I've just clipped off that capacitor. But in this particular setup, I had a slight problem. And the problem was that when the preamp volume is on maximum and the main volume is on maximum, 
very faintly in the background, I could hear a radio signal. The issue was that just probably less than 2K away, we have a quite a powerful transmitter. It's FM, but no idea what the power is, but with the preamp volume on full and the gain of the amplifier on full, you can very faintly, or if it's almost buried in the noise, hear this, this station. I tried checking, well, I couldn't find anything wrong with my earthing of the preamp, because that's usually the cause of such things. And then I thought, I wonder. So I took the preamp module out and put in some 30 picrofarad capacitors across the feedback loop which will reduce the gain at well RF frequencies. To my sheer delight and I wouldn't say amazement but sheer delight it's killed it dead and now with the input either open circuit or connected to a source and the volumes on full bearing in mind that you couldn't listen to it like this um, what I tend to do when, when my input source is the computer, I tend to have the volume on this one, the preamp at about half, and that gives a nice level of volume between 10 and two o'clock. It just feels nice like that. <laughs> So that's largely it. All I've got to do now is decide which of the fan modules I'm actually going to use. And I suspect it will be the one that I haven't got at the moment. Because on, and I have to say on paper, because we all know that the specifications from certain companies aren't always what they claim to be. But I'm optimistic, foolishly maybe, but I'm optimistic. That's all I'm waiting for now. And of course the front panel knob, which I don't know whether I'll actually live long enough to be able to receive that and put that on. Just before I go, I have to tell you about a new and I think quite exciting project coming up. I've ordered a, a new class D module. It's not new, as in it's just come out but it's new to me and it's one that after doing a bit of research seems to be on paper and from people that have looked at it and listened to it seems to be quite good so i've also ordered a switch mode power supply because this particular module only uses a single ended rail mm. So, anyway, I don't want to go on about that yet. I just wanted to whet your appetite because I've not had, I've only done two Class D projects in the past. One, a very low power 20 watt one, which was five or so years ago now, which was mediocre to say the least. And um, the last one I did, which was fairly good, but not brilliant. So I'm hoping this is going to be more brilliant than just fairly good. Watch this space.